Hello everyone, I welcome you all for today's session. I am Dr. Priyanka Sajdev here and today I am here to teach you the treatment of diabetes mellitus. So I have launched a series of integrated diabetes mellitus in which I have covered diabetes from the pathology, right? From the physiology, from the pathology, we have already covered the insulin regulation. In the last previous recordings, the lectures, you can watch it. How insulin is synthesized in human pancreas, what are the various cells in islet of Langerhans, and uh, how it is synthesized, how it is stored, how it is released, how, what is the action of the insulin, that is the physiology portion. From pathology portion, we have already covered what are the classification, the various types of diabetes, what is diabetes, what is the classification of diabetes, what is the pathogenesis of various types of diabetes, type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, gestational diabetes, we have already covered it, right. From medicine portion, we have already covered the symptomatology and complications of the diabetes. So, what are the various symptoms of the diabetes? The classical triad, the triple P, we know, polyuria, polyphagia, polydipsia, we have covered it, right? The mechanism of action, the, the, the causes of the various symptoms, the pathogenesis of the symptoms, the various complications, right? Diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic coma, we have seen the pathogenesis of the complications also, right? Not only this, we have covered the diagnosis of diabetes also in the last lecture. The blood test, the urine test, the, what are the criteria for diagnosing the diabetes? We have covered it all. Now, it's time to treat the diabetes. So, let me teach you the treatment of the diabetes, the pharmacological portion, right? So, there are two treatments available for the diabetes in the market. Number one, insulin, the injectable treatment. And number two, the oral hypoglycemic drugs. As the name indicated, it is oral. So, of course, it is oral, right? So, it comes in the form of the tablets and capsules, right? So, insulin and OHA, oral hypoglycemic agents, are the two treatments for the diabetes available in the market. For type 1 diabetes, insulin is the only treatment. For type 2 diabetes, first we offer oral hypoglycemic drugs. If it is not controlled, the last resort is to give the insulin, right? So, let me teach you insulin also, oral hypoglycemic agents, the classification, the various types of the drugs, their mechanism of action, uses, adverse effects, pharmacokinetics, everything about them. So, let me start with insulin. The various types of artificial insulin preparations available in the market. How many types of artificial insulin preparations available in the market? There are four types of artificial insulin preparations available in the market. The conventional one, the monocomponent insulins, human insulin and insulin analogs. There are four types. What is the difference between them? The first insulin which came in the market is conventional insulin. The first insulin which came in the market is conventional insulin. Okay. Before teaching you the various preparations of the insulin, it is very necessary for you to understand this graph. What is this graph? In this graph, on the y-axis, I have taken blood glucose level of a normal human being. Blood plasma glucose level of a normal human being. On the x-axis, we have taken the time, the 24 hours of a day, hours. The time is in the hours, the 24 hours of a day. So, you can see this is the basal blood sugar. This is basal blood sugar whose value is 70 to 80. Can you see it is 70? It is 70 to 80 or within 100. It is basal. It is the basal sugar, basal blood sugar. But human take three big meals. What are the three big meals? So, eight, at 8 o'clock in the morning, human takes breakfast, right? At 2 o'clock, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the humans take lunch. And at 8 o'clock in the night, humans take dinner. Normal humans I am talking about, right? So, these are the three big meals we take, right? So, whenever we take a meal, the food goes inside. The glucose from the food will be absorbed and blood glucose level rises tremendously. So, there are three peaks. You can see a peak here. You can see a peak here. You can see a peak here. So, post breakfast, post lunch, post dinner, we have peak. We have peak. We have peak. We have peak, we have peak right? And between the two meals, that is inter-meal period, again there is basal blood sugar. Basal is between 80 to 100 or 70 to 100. And peak is within 140. You can see it is almost 120. It is almost 120 but never more than 140. Never more than 140. So, this is the basic diagram you should understand before understanding the various preparations of the insulin. So, I will teach you the various regimen of insulin preparations, how we apply them to get this graph. I want this graph in all my patients, all my diabetes. This is a normal graph. It isn't me, you. I'm not diabetic. I'm, a, I'm not a diabetic person. So, the graph is for normal human being. We have a basal blood sugar level in my body, which is 70 to 100 milligram per deciliter. And post meal, whether it is breakfast, lunch or dinner or any big meal, 
So after that, I have a peak. The peak may the maximum blood glucose rise is 140, not more than that. So I want the same same graph in my patients also by uh, by giving the various preparations of the insulin. Right. Let me teach you the various preparations. The first one is the conventional. It is the first preparation which is available in the market. The first time insulin which was prepared. How we prepare insulin the first time? We prepare insulin first time from the pig pork. Pork means pig or from the cow or buffalo cow or buffalo that is beef right so we kill a pig we kill a cow take the pancreas out of them from their pancreas we extract the beta cell from the beta cell we extract the insulin so this insulin is not human insulin this insulin the conventional one it is not used nowadays so only for theoretical purpose we are learning it it was used in the past but not nowadays when the insulin was first time discovered it was prepared in this way it was prepared from a pig or a beef by taking their pancreas out by extracting the insulin from their beta cell so this insulin is pork insulin or beef insulin it is not human so it is antigenic in human it is allergic it is highly antigenic for human that's why not used nowadays we have better options available now right so what is the difference between pig and beef insulin from human insulin does it does it have any difference yes it has the difference what is the diagram of human insulin first you tell me what is human insulin human insulin ka diagram kaun bataega in the last lecture I have told you the diagram. Human insulin have two chains. One is alpha, the red one, and one is beta, the blue one. Total two chains we are having. Alpha chain have 21 amino acid. Amino acid number 1 to amino acid number 21. Total 21 amino acids we are having here. Beta chain have 30 amino acid. Amino acid number 1 to amino acid number 30. Total 30 amino acids we are having here. So in short, total we have 21 plus 30 is equal to 51 amino acids in human insulin this is a diagram of human insulin please learn it now understand the difference between beef pork as compared to human okay so you can see this table the beautiful table is in front of you right let me first talk about beef insulin as compared to human compare these two don't see the pork beef insulin and human insulin beef insulin differ from human insulin in three amino acid total 51 amino acid beef also have total 51 human also have total 51 human and beef both have alpha chain beta chain alpha 21 and beta 30 both have this this configuration total 51 hai dono mein. but there is difference beef insulin may alpha chain pe two differences are there alpha chain ka 8th amino acid and 10th amino acid humans ka alpha chain ka 8th amino acid is threonine but in beef it is alanine see instead of threonine they have alanine and humans may alpha chain ke 10th amino acid is isoleucine but in beef it is valine see the difference instead of isoleucine it is valine and humans may beta chain ka 30th amino acid again it is threonine but in beef it is alanine so threonine instead of um, alanine instead of threonine here also alanine instead of threonine and here valine instead of isoleucine these are the three differences of beef as compared to human would you like to take uh, see the differences for pork, pork insulin as compared to insulin as compared to human now see this see these two pork differ from human only one amino acid not three only one what is the difference only beta chain see the beta chain in beta chain the 30th amino acid humans have threonine but the pork have only alanine so pork differs by one amino acid from human and beef differs by three amino acid from human have you got it you you know the exact number and exact change what is which amino acid is replaced by which amino acid so many mcqs are framed from this table you have to learn this table there is no escape you have to learn this table right you have to learn this table there is no escape right so we have beef insulin we have pork insulin beef insulin have three amino acid which are different from um, humans pork insulin have one amino acid which is different from human so which is more close to human of course the pig the pork is more close to human beef is more different so the pork is more close to human that's why it is less antigenic less antigenic as compared to beef but although both are antigenic both are not used nowadays so please learn that was about they are no longer produced because they are totally replaced by other better forms that was all about conventional conventional is of two types the beef one the pork one right both are different from human beef differ by uh, one uh, three amino acid from human and pork differ by one amino acid from human you know the exact amino acid so pork is less antigenic beef is more antigenic although both are very antigenic right coming on the next insulin preparation that is mono component insulin that is highly purified right what we are doing in this in this we are taking 
the conventional beef and pork and before injecting in humans we are purifying them that's it so again they are less antigenic than conventional but little bit high antigenic than human so we are these are not used nowadays nowadays neither we use conventional nor we use mono component but these are only of theoretical importance but you should know it so highly purified forms may we take the conventional wale beef and pork and purify them before using in humans purification is done either by gel infiltration or ion exchange chromatography but still after purified forms also their immunogenicity decreases but it doesn't become zero it decreases only have you got it these are more stable they are less uh, immunogenic less antigenic but still they are not good they are not very good they have adverse effects so conventional beef and pork not purified and mono component beef and pork purified the purified version of the conventional Let's talk about human insulin and insulin analogs. पहले human insulin लेते हैं. These are the insulin which we are using nowadays. Let's talk about human insulin. As the name indicates, human insulin is prepared from humans only. Human insulin is prepared from humans only, of course. So how it is prepared from human? It is prepared by a technology which is known as recombinant DNA technology that is genetic engineering using E. coli or yeast as the organism. What we are doing it? Okay. Imagine a human. I have to prepare it from human, na? No? Imagine a human. Okay. This is a human being. You can see this is a human being. Imagine inside the human being, this is the pancreas. Okay. Inside the pancreas, this is the beta cell of the pancreas. Inside. Now take this beta cell out. Inside the beta cell, this is the nucleus of the beta cell. Inside the nucleus, this is the chromosome. On the chromosome, there is a gene which is insulin gene. This is insulin gene. So take the DNA out of this beta cell. Take the DNA out. Okay. First, I will take the DNA out. So this is the DNA of the beta cell of human pancreas. Human pancreas ke pancreas ke beta cell ka DNA hai ye. In which there is a gene. This is the gene. This is insulin gene. This will synthesize insulin by with the help of transcription and translation. In the red DNA, green is the gene, right? I will use the enzyme. The name of the enzyme is restriction endonuclease enzyme, right? It will cut this portion of the DNA having insulin gene. So this portion I have separated from entire DNA. Now this is insulin gene. I am having insulin gene with me. The human insulin gene, human. It is not beef. It is not pork. The human insulin gene I have extracted it separately. What I will do to this gene? I will use a vector now. You know what is a vector? The vector is usually a plasmid. This is a vector, and I will combine with this gene, the insulin gene, with this vector. So this is my carrier. This is my vector, and I will inject it inside the organism. The organism is E. coli or yeast. I will inject this vector inside it so that it can multiply and. So the same story. It is genetic engineering, and it can replicate, and synth synthesis of insulin can take place inside the organism. You can see in this diagram, this is the vector. Okay, this is the vector. This is the plasmid. This is the entire DNA, which is which DNA? B beta cell of the pancreas. Beta cell pancreas, inside which the blue is the target gene. Can you see? This is the target gene, the insulin gene. I am using an enzyme restriction enzyme, restriction endonuclease enzyme. It will cut my target gene. So my target gene is separated. I am combining it with plasmid using a another enzyme ligate. Ligate will join both of them. So can you see? This is my vector and this is my target gene. I have combined both of them and I am this is this is my vector containing the target gene. I am injecting it inside a host cell. Host cell is either E. coli or a yeast or a yeast, any living cell. I am injecting it. So in this host cell, this is the DNA of the host cell, and this is my vector. This is my vector containing my target gene. It will integrate here, and when the host cell will replicate, it will replicate. My target gene will also replicate, and inside all of them, insulin synthesis take place. This insulin is human insulin because the gene inside them is human gene, human insulin gene. So it is exactly same as that of human insulin, not antigenic, having exactly 51 amino acids. Having exactly 51 amino acids, 21 plus 30. That is total 51. Have you got it? Have you got it? So it is. It is having more rapid absorption, easier and more defined peak, and having shorter duration of action. That is the second insulin. Uh, that is the human insulin. Coming on insulin analogs. The third is the the last one are the insulin analogs. Now there are many analogs which we have synthesized from you. First we synthesize human insulin by using genetic engineering. By using a gene that is insulin gene of the human. Now we will do some changes in that. That is known as insulin analog. We are doing changes in human insulin. First, we synthesize human insulin outside human body, right? Instead of human body, we are we are synthesizing it in, in inside a E. coli or yeast. And then after extracting, we will do some changes in it for changing its property. That is insulin analogs, right? 
so insulin analogs may there are four types of insulin analogs rapid acting short acting intermediate acting long acting now please understand rapid acting that is ultra fast acting then short intermediate long so depending on their onset of action and their duration of action they are divided into four categories okay the rapid acting short acting intermediate acting long acting please understand rapid acting onset is within 15 minutes as you inject in a patient the insulin injection within 10 to 15 minutes it will show its action that is onset and duration of action is 3 to 5 hours for next 3 to 5 hours till next meal they are useful so we eat every 3 to 5 hours now we have breakfast in the morning at 8 o'clock so after 4 hours we have lunch at 2 o'clock after 4 hours or 5 hours we have dinner at 7 o'clock 8 o'clock right so every 3 to 5 hours we have some meal we have some meal so inter meal period may it is taking care of it have you got it that is rapid acting and coming in role in 10 to 15 minutes that is 0.2 to 0.3 hour 10 to 15 minutes the best insulin right the second short acting it requires 30 minutes for onset <coughs> but duration of action is 6 to 8 hours so dono bad gaya right short acting coming on intermediate acting so it comes in role after 1 to 2 hours 1 to 2 hours the onset duration of action is 20 hours 20 hours right and the last is long acting the last but not least they are the long acting they come in role after 4 hours 2 to 4 hours and they are active for 24 hours so you can see the onset you can see the duration of action based on which they are divided into rapid short intermediate and long please learn it please understand it please learn it the four types of insulin you got it rapid acting short acting intermediate acting and long acting the four types of insulin are in front of you let me further classify them so okay rapid acting short acting intermediate acting and long acting the four types of insulin are in front of you have you got it so rapid insulin are of three types it is in front of you so it is listro aspart glulisin all have s in them short acting is only one regular regular intermediate again two insulin zinc suspension and neutral protamin hedge hedge and long acting again are of two types insulin glargin and detimer they have r in them right so please learn the names i will give you the description of all of them the various types of insulin and the details of them in the next lecture please learn the classification of insulin so thank you very much for being with me in this lecture as the link is expiring so i have to end this lecture and give you the details of the insulin in the next lecture have you got it thank you very much and uh, for the newcomers as you all already know uh, most of the students it is for the newcomers on an academy we have two types of paid subscription in plus we will give you access of live and recorded lectures of an academy only in iconic along with an academy we will give you prep ladder also right so whatever subscription you want to take it's your wish I advise all my students to install Unacademy Learners app from the Play Store and after installing go to Neat PG category, search my name Dr. Priyanka Sachdev, you will find up my recorded special class. Special class are the free classes like YouTube, they are the free classes but on the app, right? So uh, the, these are the features which make these classes more special as compared to YouTube free classes. You can watch any recording for free. Only thing you require a code to unlock it, the code is Sachdev 10. That is my surname, S-A-C-H-D-E-V, Sachdev Tan is the code. Once you take the subscription, you will be eligible for all these batches to attend the lectures in these batches, right? So, uh, these are the various plans in plus, these are the various plans in iconic. Whatever plan you want to take, you can take it. And if you use my code Sachdev 10 before payment on any of these plans, you will get 20% discount if you get the subscription before 16th of March. So up to 16th of March, it is 20% discount for this code. After that, you will get only 10% discount and price hike is coming after that. So please take the benefit of this opportunity and take the subscription. Thank you very much. I'm ending this lecture.